Welcome to Evolution on the Mic. I am your host, Ariana De La Cruz. And I'm your co-host, Antoine Dove. And we are so excited. We are back. We are still in season two, The Power of Words. In our last episode, episode seven, we discussed how to speak to the enemy in times of testing. Today, in episode eight, we are going to talk about the power of words as it relates to the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness. But before we get into all of that, Antoine, how are you doing? I'm How's things well. been going since our last since our last talk? Whew, I'm well, Adi. Uh, I, I mean, things have been going and moving. I'm still working through business systems and structures and setting things up between my coaching business and real estate. There's been a lot of changes in the real estate industry. As some people who, if they're listening to this and they are in real estate, or even if you're looking at buying a house, I'm sure you've been hearing in the news about a lot of stuff that's going on with the National Association of Realtors. So a lot of fun stuff that's coming out that's, I won't call it challenges, but it's opportunities. I think it's mm-hmm. ways for us to approach business differently as realtors as we work with our clients and finding ways to uh, get people into the homes that they desire and the homes that they need. So that's happening. The coaching side has been great. I've been picking up a few clients here and there. Right now, it's just getting my my wheels turning with doing coaching consistently and finding my groove. So I've been doing uh, a lot of uh, just practice sessions, working with friends, working with other people that I know to get feedback. And it's been phenomenal uh, going through that program and continuing to to build the coaching business and the structure there. But other than that, it's been good. It's great. Life's good. Continuing to work out. Awesome. Continue to stay healthy and fit. Yeah. Doing Amazing. what we need to do, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm very, very happy for you. You know, um, it's only up from here. That's That's where this is all going. It's only up. How are you? How's how's things in in the amazing world of Ariana? Oh man, super exciting stuff, man! Like, um, as you've seen, I finally launched my ads for my funding company, so. and um, it's been good. Like, I've been getting really good feedback. Um, I've been getting leads, and um, you know, but like pretty awesome people coming into my DMs, which is you know different for me because as I keep saying, my Funding company was 100% referral based until I invested in myself and I invested in an amazing marketing company that is helping me with the marketing of my funding company so that I can generate leads and paying for ads and things like that. So I got some ads out, like six of them that I'm testing and there's like two of them that are going phenomenal and I'm getting a lot of good feedback from so, I mean, um, that's exciting news because now I can no longer re- just rely on referrals, which is amazing. I mean, any business that can rely on referrals means you're doing a good job. It means people see you. It means people appreciate you. It means people like just can can they, they can help themselves, but to put your name out there. Mm-hmm. So that is amazing. But it's also something that I can track. Right. I can't scale. And I want to scale. I want to be able to know how many leads I'm going to get per month based on what I'm putting out with my ads and, you know, how much money I'm putting into the machine to give me the leads. So there's a whole math and a whole science to it. And and that's where I'm at right now with my company and building it and getting all my systems in place right now. So, I mean, my automation game is strong right now. So I don't have to do a lot of the things. Everything is now on like automation when somebody gets into my funnel things just happen where they book a call when they book a call um you know they get they get reminders and you know what i mean when they sign an agreement they send them a link to put in their information download documents so those things that like i will take time to call send me this send me that i'm missing this oh my god you did this wrong it's automated now so i mean i definitely you know i'm really feeling like a legit business owner with systems and um you know i have uh, my amazing best friend helping me in, in my business right now as well and taking on some responsibilities, which is uh, amazing because then I can focus on the bigger picture um, as she's helping me along in, in, in quite a few things right now. Um, so I have some help and I'm great, great. grateful for it and, you know, looking forward to hiring even more people um, in the future, the new future. So, I mean, it, it just feels good to be able to not only do this for myself, but to do this for other people and, you know, you know, help other people as I'm as I'm hiring and changing their lives. And that's really what I'm why I'm doing what I'm doing. Right. It's not just for myself is so that I can have an ability to change the lives of the people around me, the people that I hire. Like I want to make people's lives better 
and um i feel like i'm well on my way so it's a, it's it's going good yeah yeah I, I love seeing those videos if y'all have not seen them yet you've got to be on instagram follow <laughs> trusted thunder because you will see these videos pop up you got adi in the <laughs> pool she's out by the cabana i mean she's doing it up big time she got these little oval glasses on she's looking all fresh and fly <laughs> my ray-bans <laughs> i see you i see how you moving it was like a whole yeah. new and and you could tell from looking at the videos how much time and energy that you put into delivering a quality product. When I watch the videos, and I'm not just saying this because you're my homie and we end this together, but just in general, when I look at the videos and stuff that people sponsor that they put out, sometimes it feels like they're trying to sell you and it doesn't always feel genuine. It doesn't feel like it's coming across like I'm genuinely here to help you. I can say from your videos that I felt truly like you were genuinely here to help someone. Like it felt natural. It felt like it was coming from a place of heart and that you really wanted to, to help whoever needs funding. And if they have these requirements, if they're hitting 700 credit score and they need funding either for real estate or they need funding for their business to expand, you're there and you have the contacts. And I believed it. And I truly believed it. So hats yeah. off and kudos to you for truly not only putting out an amazing product, but continuing to push forward in your business truly yeah Amazing no thank job. you i i appreciate the kudos and the feedback because you know um it it was it was work you know what i mean to to do that um to put out that content that information on camera and make it look cool but yet informative and yet natural you know what i mean um and i did my best and those were my my beginnings you know what i mean because there's more to come <sighs> And I want my ads to really be relatable to, to, like you said, you know what I mean? I wanted to hit where people feel like I can trust her. That's why, you know, I'm the trusted funder mm -hmm. <laughs> on Instagram, because I definitely do want people to see me and feel like she's she's genuine, like she's real. She's a real person that can really help me and that I'm not aloof or that I, I have it all. think that I'm everything is like, no, like these are the things that I can do for you. And like, it will legit happen if you work with me. And um, the like I said, the response has been has been amazing with the people like, you know, really trying to contact me and, you know, really wanting me to help them. So and it's only been a couple of days. So I'm let's like, go, wow, man. I'm let's excited go. and everything that's happening, you know, even the even the not so good things. I'm seeing everything as an opportunity because I'm learning. Right. I'm learning. I'm growing. I, I don't really know what I'm doing, if I'm being honest. But as every day goes by and I get through the hurdles. It makes me feel good, like so proud of myself that mm. as I'm getting through the hurdles of things that I don't understand, like ads manager on Facebook, it's look, it's like Chinese. It's a whole world and it's complicated. And you have to be careful what you're doing because you're spending money on these things. So you have to just, you know, and I'm grateful for the team I have behind me that's helping me get through all this, because if it wasn't for them, I would I, I this would be a feat that I'll be like, I'm done. Like, this is scary. It's too much. I'm never going to understand it. And I feel like now I'm understanding it. Like yesterday I uploaded my last two um, video ads that I had and I didn't, and I did it myself by looking at like, cause they helped me do like uh, my team helped me do the first few. And I was like, let me do like, like the last two. Like, let me just take care of it myself. Um, and I was like, wow, I got it. But I was there for like an hour and a half, like making sure, right. Watching the video that they sent me, like, you know, <laughs> and I was like, I want to like be able to do it on my own. Um, even though they could have helped me with all of them, I was like, I, this is knowledge that I want to have for me and eventually build a coaching program for other people that also might want to do ads, right? Mm -hmm. Um, In Facebook that now I know the skill, right? I can market that as well. That's something that I can help other people. Not just yet, but I know, I know I'll end up mastering it. You know of how course. I do, Antoine. I know how you do. And it don't take long. It don't take long. Yeah. At so all. <laughs> I'm going to master it and, and eventually bundle that up in a coaching program in some shape or form and help people do it because it is tough. It, it really is. Like it's, it's easy once you, you know, but to get to the knowing is, uh, <laughs> it's like, what is going on? Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't get it. That's why that's what that was me until now I get it. I got it finally a month later. Um, I love I love how you one of the things you just said that's so critical in business since well, we're on that topic because, you know, business yeah. is near and dear to our hearts is how important it is to have a team. Yeah. And and people oftentimes 
people see the success of of one person and everything that they're doing and think that wow you know like they you know they did that on their own and although they are a big part of that there's usually a team of folks that are around them that are supporting them yeah. and coming together as truly a village um a family in some cases yeah. like to make things happen and you need people from all different walks of life and experiences to help you to build that and so um i love the fact that you are continuing to pour your your blessings and your energy into other people and leveraging their skills to bring together these synergies that are creating opportunities for people to reach their dreams and their potential and where they want to go like you are creating that through providing jobs for people through mm -hmm. finding folks that are aligned with the mission of where you want to go and collaborating with them and i think that's so beautiful when you think about business and the way that we grow and Funny enough, with that being said, when we were talking about the armor of God in our last episode, in episode seven, as yeah. we were kind of finishing up that episode and we're talking about it, what's funny and very interesting is that where they talk about the armor of God in the Bible mm. is actually embedded in a letter. So the book of Ephesians, where it comes from, it mm. was written from a letter from a guy named Paul, who was an apostle. And Paul was sending this letter out to the churches at that time to encourage them to come together. So in the same way that for your business, where you're bringing people together for who are like-minded to get this amazing feat done, Paul at this time was encouraging churches to also come together and support them, support each other, because there were some things happening in the churches at that time that was causing some problems. And mm. you know, we all know that when good things are happening. The devil always, 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 always finds a way to show up yep. to make sure that he knows that we know that he sees what's going on. <laughs> and this is exactly what, what happened back then. And Paul, which is a very interesting story, if I could spend a little bit of time on that, Paul yeah, absolutely. was this apostle. And Paul actually, back in the day, so when, when Paul first came onto the scene, Paul was actually persecuting Christians, people who followed Jesus, because Paul mm. thought Jesus was fake. He thought he was a fraud. And although Paul was a Jew himself, he saw Jesus and what he was doing as an imposter. And so he persecuted a lot of Jews. He did all of these bad things to people that were followers of Jesus Christ. And interesting enough, because God always has a plan. And for those who don't know, if you haven't experienced it yet, when you are going left in life and you think that left is the way you're going to go, God will sometimes step in and say, I'm sorry, we're about to take a U-turn because I have some other place I want to take you. Mm. And this is exactly what God did in Paul's life. And he came in and he blinded Paul so that Paul then had to rely on someone that was a Christian to help heal him. And it was through that that God brought Paul back into the fold and Paul completely did a 180. And then Paul now became one of the strongest apostles of Jesus. And he traveled all throughout the lands, speaking to different churches and empowering churches, churches to be followers of Christ, to be followers of Jesus. And when he wrote this letter, the letter itself was written while he was in prison from being imprisoned by people he used to hang out with who persecuted Christians. So by him going to the other side, he now was being persecuted by people he used to hang out with who were his best friends. Mm. And this was his opportunity in writing this letter to say, hey, I've been through it. I know the power of God. I know the power in the name of Jesus. Mm. And I want you as churches, as congregations, as followers of Christ, I want you guys to never Never, ever, ever forget the power you have with inside of you that God has given us to do his will. And this letter was all about doing his will. And so he talked about the body of armor of God as a protection for people. And that's how mm. we ended up getting into talking about the body armor of God. So I don't know if you if you nice. knew that, Ari, but that, no. that was kind of a little bit of the backstory of how the body of armor came about, because it's really only mentioned in the Bible so to speak, in Ephesians. There's a few other places mm. that it comes up, but it's really talked about in Ephesians in Paul's letter to the churches. And um, where was Paul at in his life when he 
because I, you know, I'm not familiar. So thank you for totally bringing this up. This is awesome. Like where was Paul at in his life when, you know, before, you know, God came and kind of switched his life around, like, where was he at? Like, I want to know more, a little bit more about like, you know, clearly he was taking one path and then, you know, God said, no, we're going another. Where was he at? Like what path was that? Yeah. So he was, so he was a citizen of Rome Okay. and his, he was a Jew. And so he, the Jews at the time, and they talk about this in the Bible and, and I'm still learning a lot of this as I'm going through it myself, brushing up on my knowledge, but you had the Jews and the Gentiles and the Gentiles were people who were just non-Jewish and they didn't get along. The, yeah. the Jews did not like the Gentiles. And so Christians, people who followed Christ, who are followers of Jesus Christ, they were in some ways persecuted. They were a, G- a Gentile, were persecuted by the Jews. The Jews did not like the Gentiles. And so mm. he was on that side of persecuting people. Like he put people to death. This was the type of things he did. And what's interesting about the story- oh, Paul? Paul, yes. And, and was the, persecuting people. He was, yep. Paul was persecuting people who were followers of Jesus Christ because he believed that Jesus Christ was an imposter. Okay. So he didn't think that Jesus was truly, you know, the son of God. He didn't think Jesus was who he really was. And so people who, who followed him, they saw it as blasphemy. They saw it as them going against God because this isn't, this isn't God's son. That's how they saw it. And all of this happened, just to put some things in context, this was happening when Paul wrote this letter. This was happening after Jesus had already been um, prosecuted on the on the cross. He had been mm. killed on the cross. So when he wrote this letter, it was after that, that he was sharing with the churches that, hey, let's not forget who we are. But the time when he's, mm. pr- when he's prosecuting these, or uh, persecuting these these. Christians, these followers of Christ, this was when Jesus was walking the earth. When Jesus was around walking the earth, he's he's persecuting these people. And it was, I, I love the story because it's so interesting. I love finding these stories in the Bible where God uses someone that you least expect. And it, it's if you're someone that's listened to this podcast and you may at times, because we, as we continue to evolve this podcast, Ariana and I both wanted to get deeper in the word of God because we understand that there's power in the word of God. And we'll talk about more of this as we get into the, the armor of God, but God will use any willing soul and God will sometimes see something in you that you don't even see in yourself. And I think when I think about Paul and when they talk about him in his time prior to you know becoming an apostle and, and a true person going around talking about Jesus and Jesus is the great work of Jesus. He was loyal. He was dedicated. He was well-respected. And so Hmm. I believe, and this is just my, you know, my understanding of what I believe. I believe that God saw the power in him and he realized that he just wasn't using it for the right purpose. And so God recruited him for his army and how he recruited him was by showing him who truly was it in power here. It wasn't who he thought. It was truly him and Jesus yeah. Christ. And when he had that breakthrough moment, when his, yeah. you know, he went blind, Jesus was the one that came and spoke to him. And Jesus said to him, why are you prosec- Why are you persecuting my people? Like, what are you doing? And he was just like, who is this? Why are you talking to me? Who is, who is this? And he's like, it's the son mm. of God. This is Jesus. And then when he went blind, he made the connection. He was like, oh, okay. I might have messed up. <laughs> that's my bad. And Jesus then gave him some specific instructions. And in those instructions, that's how he ended up coming into the care of uh, a woman who was a Christian woman who ended up taking care of him and healing him. And it took three days. You know, we talk about numbers. It took three days for wow. him to restore his sight. But it was once he restored his sight, he was fully on board and following Jesus and becoming, you know, an apostle for Jesus. Wow. And then that, um, and then he came up with the, the six, um, the armor of God and the, and the six, you know, um, that's yep. awesome. Yeah. So he then, when he wrote, when he continued to go around, cause at that time he, when he became an apostle for Jesus, he traveled around talking about Jesus in his good works to these churches. 
And so he had great relationships with churches throughout the region. Everyone knew, knew Paul. And when he was finally caught, like the, the Jews caught him and mm-hmm. they basically put him in prison. They put him on house arrest because he was continuing to talk to the Gentiles. They saw him as blasphemous. When they did that, it was then that he began to write letters because now he wasn't out about traveling around talking to churches. The work didn't stop. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I'm in prison. I'm home house arrest. I guess I can't do anything. No, the fire still burned inside of him to make sure that he was supporting the plan and the will of Jesus and going out and continuing to talk to these churches. And so he wrote these letters and he wrote do we this have letter. the letter. The, the letter is the book of Ephesians. That's what the book of Ephesians is, is it's the actual letter that he wrote to the churches. And he in, in mm. he kind of breaks it up into two sections. The first part he talks about kind of, he goes back to explaining, and I won't read it completely from the Bible, but he goes into talking about, remember who we are. Like we are children of God. We are followers of Jesus Christ. And all of the power, all of these blessings, all of these beautiful things that God has continued to give us throughout these years, remember that that is who we are. And he challenged the churches to uphold these standards that God has set for us, uphold the standards. So what we saw, how Jesus walked the earth, he challenged them to walk the earth in the same way Jesus did. And that was what he talked about in the first part. And then the last part, Mm -hmm. again, as we know, when you're doing amazing things, when you start talking about bringing people together, bringing God's people together for the will of God, then guess what? devil shows up. And we talked about this in our last episode. The devil shows up. He comes in. He knows something big is about to happen. He knows what's going down and he's going to do everything he can to stop it. And Paul had the the foresight to know that. And so in the second part of his letter, that's why he talks about the, the armor of God is because he wants people to not only know, like we talked in the last episode, know the power that they have, but also understand that they have protection as well. And God has already given us what these protections are. And that's today what we'll go through in terms of the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness. Awesome. I'm definitely excited uh, to hear more. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. So let's start with the first one. So helmet of salvation. Awesome. So the helmet of salvation is, um, and again, these were all written from looking at the imagery of a Roman soldier's, their attire. Right. So if I'm going into battle and I'm going to war, there's certain things that I would have on in terms of armor to protect my body. And today, the two we want to focus on is the helmet of salvation, and the breastplate of righteousness. So our helmet, why would we wear a helmet? Right. Like we put a helmet on that for protection. Right. Yeah. So we're basically. protecting our face. We're protecting our head. And that time they probably didn't have face shields. So we're protecting our head as we're going into battle. The thing that we want to protect when we think about protecting our head is our mind. So the helmet is a way to represent that we're putting something on our head for protection of our mind. Now, Mm -hmm. we all know, we all know that one of the areas that the devil loves to attack us on is our mind. If, If the devil can creep in in any way and start to and sow in any type of doubt or put anything into our mind that makes us fall into a place of disbelief to think we're not good enough, we're not the best, we're not strong enough, I'm not fast enough, I'm not this enough, I'm not loved enough. Whatever he can put in there, it sends us into a bit of a disarray, right? We Mm -hmm. get into our feelings, we start to doubt ourselves. We, in some cases, and I've fallen victim to this, we even sometimes start to doubt God. Like, is God here for me? Is, is God here to protect me? Does he hear me? Like, where are you? You don't see what's going on? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, and if, he knows how to trigger. He like, knows. He's he knows. so smart. He knows. And, and, and that's the thing about the devil is that I think sometimes we, and I love in our last episode when you talked about the devil and, and putting him as this like four year old tantrum little child. And, and it's true, he is this four year old tantrum little child but he's smart as all get out. He knows our triggers. He's been studying us. Like think about somebody that's like sitting back and they're kind of studying you. They're watching your every move. They see what things like irk you, what things make you a little upset, what things get you triggered. And they go, Ooh, he looks for those weak spots. 
And the reason he looks for those weak spots, because he knows <laughs> if he can press on those weak spots, what happens? Things start to fall apart. You start to doubt yourself. You start to doubt God. And so the helmet serves as that protection. When we put that on, it's that assurance that our mind is being protected. Mm-hmm. We are protecting our mind from the enemy. And anything that he comes at us with, if he's trying to get at us and trying to get in our mind, we have this protective armor so that he can't penetrate our mind. He can't get inside of our head. And that that helmet is being provided by God, right? Like God's providing that protection. In some ways, I'd even think about it as God placing his hands over your head. Like imagine mm. like if God, if God just took his big, massive hands and just wrapped them around your head. What that would mean. I can, I can even imagine that with my daughter, like if my daughter and I just took my hands and I just kind of put my hands over my daughter's head, how that may make her feel safe. Like my dad's got me. Yeah, nothing, nothing can happen wrong. Like nothing there's nothing wrong. that can happen that can bring me down. Like, yeah, I'm a superhero. <laughs> like I'm a superhero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I right. definitely feel like a super, like I'm I'm really wearing that helmet, like, like the Power Rangers. Yes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so glad you said that because I know. Yeah, that's how- so something, I see it like, yeah, something that's so interesting about that, right, is when I was reading through this and and I won't get too much into it because we'll talk mm-hmm. about it in a second. But yeah. yeah, think about it like like levels. There's levels to this. Right. Like there's levels. So like each time, like let's say I'm wearing this helmet and as I'm wearing this helmet, I'm, I'm, I'm protected. I'm good. But then let's say somehow the devil finds a way I, I get lax. Maybe something happens. I think. You know, something happens that throws me off my, my my game. And all of a sudden now, like I'm I'm in my head about a lot. I'm starting to doubt a lot of things and that helmet's gone. Well, what do you do? What do we do when that helmet's gone? Right. What do we lean on? And this is to me where it comes into what you had brought up before about the power of words. It's it's in this moment that we have the power of words to be able to to go and in, in, to to address that. And we'll talk about that yeah. more later, but like, I want to be clear, like there's this helmet's there for protection and insurance, but the devil's still going to be out there. He's still going to be trying to find every single way he sees the helmet, but he's thinking, how do I get out? How do I get that helmet off? What can I do to help remove that helmet? Because I want to get in their mind when I'm in their mind. I know I can start to control their thoughts. And if I'm controlling their thoughts, I can make them doubt God. If I make them doubt God, mm-hmm. then I'm winning. I'm disrupting his army. I'm now instilling doubt. Yeah. They don't know anymore. They don't know if what they're doing is right. Yeah. You know? No, completely. I mean, what I think about is like if I'm going through through something, like things happen in our mm-hmm. in our lives, things are going to happen. You know, we're gonna lose a loved one. Like it's it's bound to happen. Um, we might get laid off of our jobs. Like we might, you know, our get our house, you know, um, um, go into foreclosure that we've worked so hard to get because you know we might have gotten laid off. We're not able to pay our mortgage. Like, and these there's devastating things that just you know by just the nature of life. Like it's not always going to be peaches and cream. No matter you know how much we love and believe in God. Like you know He doesn't say that we're not going to go through tough times, right? So what the enemy is going to do in those times is he already knows that like our, our, our helmet may be a little loose, right? Like mm-hmm. we're already not in a good place. Our, our thoughts are as much as we're trying to stay positive, like it's on, like we're like the enemy can get in, but it's, it's not as firm because life happens and we get down and we start to doubt and we start to fear. Like, it's just, you know, as things are going on in our lives, and I feel like in those moments, the enemy will, you know, be like, okay, this is my opportunity, right? Yeah. He might say, I didn't create this opportunity, right? This is, you know, because life happened. This is why we always have to stand on guard, right? He's like, this is my opportunity now. This is easy. This is an easy win for me, right? Like they're, that helmet, I'm just going to pop that right off and I'm going to steep into their mind right. to have them stay down and depressed or low as long as possible until they stop believing in anything, in themselves and God and their dreams, like, you know, kind of, you know, go into the negative world with him. So kind of like the way I see this is if that happens, like if you are in a really low place because life happened and you can't seem to find, you know, like you can't keep that helmet on and sturdy, you know, it's there, but it's, it's wobbly and the enemy finds a way through, 
right? This is where we have like our layers of protection. If if it's not there anymore, we feel like now we're even in a, in a worse place, right? This is where the power of words comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't speak to the enemy in those times. But I love that God gave us this this armor, like this uh, this of the helmet, because it's kind of like no matter what can can be going on in our minds, the enemy. He just, he doesn't have, he just can't get through. He can't just say, knock, knock, I'm coming in. No, there's a lot that he has to go through to get there. But even if he, he happens to get in because life happened, we, God also gave us the power of words. And like, this is why we intertwined these, the, the arm, the armor of God and the six pieces, why we combined it into the power of words season, mm -hmm. because they go hand in hand. God gives us this protective armor, right? All six of them that we're going to get into as we go on. But he also ultimately, if anything were to happen, right? He, he gave us like our words that we could speak. So I just kind of wanted to say that because like, you know, life happens, things happens. And um, the armor is there as protection. But if all else fails, you know, um, he gave us that one offense, which is just the sword that we're going to talk about. And, in you know, just the words that we have and, you know, what the Bible says and how we can win over the enemy, no matter what, in times of testing or in times of just going through things, because again, life happens. So yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, I didn't want to get long winded money. there, but that's kind of like what, what hit me. And I just wanted to bring it home, like why we combined these two topics together. I think it's really important. Oh for yeah, the audience to understand that. Yeah, and you and you nailed it too with the the layers, and I think yeah. that's the other thing to to think about that these these armor pieces are just layers. Like yeah. our physical body is underneath, and whether you think about in the physical or the spiritual, it's something on top that's providing extra protection from something you don't want to get in or to harm you. And so that helmet is just another layer. You're making it even harder for the devil to get inside your mind when you think about mm -hmm. the helmet. And how I like to think about this is that those, when you think of helmets, not all helmets are created the same, right? So the work we do when we start thinking about our minds and how we work on conditioning our minds and protecting our minds and reading God's word and doing the things we need to fortify our minds so that it's strong when the devil attacks, think about that as a helmet upgrade. So you might start out with just some flimsy little dinky little helmet, but as you continue to work on your mind and how you think mm. and how you engage with God and what, what God shares with you, that helmet may get a little bit thicker. You might go from like a little dinky little helmet. I love that. Yeah. To something a little bit more fancy, right? It might now be gold and there might be this extra little, you know, maybe now it has a visor so he can't get to your eyes. You know, like that's how <laughs> I view it is that it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's about protection but as we grow and develop that protection also grows it becomes yeah. stronger you know yeah it's like you know having the understanding isn't enough right like right. like knowing that i have this helmet isn't enough and this is why like we're bringing this up for our viewers because it's like yes you have you have it god provided these these this armor right and now we're on just the helmet and he provided this to protect our minds and our thoughts which is everything that functions everything else comes from what we have up here so we know that we have the helmet and that through god like having that we can be protected from the enemy and our thoughts and, and nourishing our thoughts but it's not enough so what we need to do is get deeper into, you know, who God is and what God says and, and the word and in our relationship with him, because the deeper we know, right, we was like, we don't know what we don't know, but the mm -hmm. deeper we know him and what he says, and we believe that as true for 100 percent, especially the things that he wants to teach us that we can protect ourselves against the enemy, that helmet, like you're saying, can become more like stronger and thicker and more, you know, capable of protecting against the enemy. So when we're going through the really, really hard things that maybe in day one would have completely had us in a in a frenzy, right? Now, maybe in day 30 and day 60, those things can try to happen. But it's like, right. anyway, <laughs> I know what God says. I know yep. what's really going on here. Oh, the enemy, I see you. You trying yep. me. Ain't going to work. Stop. <laughs> you know, I see you. But in day one, when we're just understanding that, it might not be 
that you're going through something and that you can easily come out of it. Right. Um, but over time and getting deeper in God and knowing who he is and, and reading his word and, and what he's done, he continues to do and will, and will always do right. He's the same. He's the same, always been, and always will be. So understanding that and knowing that can only like make that helmet much better quality to protect us against the enemy. Agreed. Yep. And that, that just leads us right into the next part. So the breastplate of righteousness is another layer of protection and the breastplate of righteousness is really a body armor of God's righteousness. And when we think of the righteousness of God, we think of the heart, right? The, 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 the breastplate is really to cover our heart. And our heart is our emotional center of our body. We feel so much from our heart. Mm. And then you think about it when we talk about like my heart hurts. Like if you've if you've lost a loved one and the pain that you feel in your heart from the loss of a loved one, that's the same thing. Like that pain that you feel, that is what we're trying to protect our heart from is that pain that the enemy may bring, whatever way he may be thinking about trying to bring it. And God's righteousness serves as a way to protect that heart because God loves us and God makes sure that we know that he loves us. He's, he's sent his only son here to die for us. And the reason he did that was to show us the level of love that God has for us. And that, that, that breastplate of righteousness is just a reminder. Like it's protecting our heart, but it's a reminder. That's why I put my hand here is because it's a reminder of the love that God has for us. So similar how the helmet works as a way to keep us locked in and knowing that we're protecting our mind, this is protecting our heart. And it's also a reminder of the love that God has for us. And the more and more we develop that love, the more and more we, we build that strong relationship with God, that breastplate becomes thicker. That breastplate becomes more fortified. It becomes stronger becomes yeah. bigger, right? And and then when the devil gets ready to try to attack us, whatever way, if he, let's say he had a sword and he comes and he tries to stab us, you can't stab through steel, right? Yeah. You can't get through it. You're not coming through, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, what I thought about was, you know, he gave us the hem the, hel the helmet. And I don't know if that was purposely that you mentioned that first, or if that's just the order is in, because if we are 100% protected up here and mm. nothing is seeping through and nothing is, is getting us down, we're going through things, but we believe in God and we love God. And, you know, we're still being of service to others. Like we're still um, mentally strong and capable and like, we're going to do everything that we need to do. Right. Then that seeps down to how we feel in here, because if up here, I'm strong, I'm worthy, I'm loved, I'm lovable, right? We have all these positive affirmations. We're going through things, but we're like, you know what? Everything happens for a reason and everything is happening for me, right? It's not happening to me, it's happening for me, right? Those mm -hmm. We have all those positive words in our hearts is gonna amplify for us to continue being, of, being loving to ourselves, loving God, honoring him, doing his will, loving others, being there for others, being of service. That's what's gonna come naturally because it's like we feel good, we have joy. No matter what's going on, we have peace. But it's like it starts with having this protection. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because this is what kind of what's gonna control your heart. So that's what I seen. And I also like felt, as you were saying, that like the the like the, the plate gets thicker and thicker as you know, we're diving deep into our relationship with God and who he is and his word. And we're just like not letting nothing get in is that I just picture like as that, that, you know, um, plate is getting thicker. Our heart is getting expanding mm. and expanding and how beautiful is a world when every individual is just filled with love. There's no competition. There's no hating. There's there's no like, oh, let me step all over you. Like, let me get my way. Like, there's none of that. There's just, I want everybody to win, right? Everybody is capable. I want to lift people up. I want to be of service. I want to help. I want to, you know, help other people achieve. It's not only about me. Like, that's what happens. Yeah. So I, I'm loving where this is going because I can see how each one having those armors Thick, thickened and more like of quality because God, as we strengthen our relationship with God, he makes those things like stronger in us that it allows us to just be 
of the one with everyone and have this love and peace in our hearts. And that spreads and that's vibration, right? Because we are energy and we emit that to people and people feel that people can just look into our eyes and just hear us speak and they can feel that distinctive energy from you when you have that, you know, your heart is expanded with love and, and you just appreciate everything and everyone around you. Like people feel that. And yeah. I think that happens when you are protected, you know, from by the helmet and then you have your heart protected. The enemy can get in and try to like make us down depressed and all um, talk about other people and just bring negativity and gossip and all that, you know, ickiness that comes from the enemy when he's trying to get into our minds and then it steeps into our hearts and we get cold, right? Um, we turn like icicles and we just, you know, become bitches and assholes and liars, manipulators and all those other things, right? Yeah. So I'm really just loving where um all of this is taking us um because I think it's very helpful to our audience. I mean, it's very helpful to me in 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 hearing this and just really understanding more than anything, you know, to dive deeper into yeah. God because there's so much benefits. Yeah. Like I'm learning so much in the journey. Like there's just so much benefits and things that God provides us, but it's not enough just knowing them. Right. It, you have to really um, gain the wisdom from it. And it's diving deep and practicing. Yep, yep, that is exactly it. And you nailed that in the last episode, too. Like, it's not enough just to to know it. You have to put it into practice. And I, I, I when I think of these, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness is a, a very big piece of armor because the heart is such a big piece of everything. Yeah. And the brain, the mind, our belief systems, as we've talked about before, our beliefs birth our realities, right? Like we, there, there is this system of like protecting these vital parts of our body, both in the spiritual and the physical, that controls so much. And the devil knows that. He knows that if I can get into your heart, I can have mm. a lot more of an impact versus oh. if I like, you know, stabbed you in your pinky toe. Right. You can stab me in my pinky toe all day. I'll be all right. But if you stab me in my heart, I'm a dead dog. You know, I'm done. I'm done. Done. <laughs> and like that's that's just how it can't rolls. Come back from that. You can't come back from that. <laughs> a headshot, anything. You can't come back. Can't from come that. back You're from done. that. You're done. We want to leave you guys with this amazing scripture that was written by Paul in the Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 to 17. And it says this a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers of authority of the unseen world, mighty against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, Put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the times of the evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body of armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So this was written by Paul in Ephesians, and it pretty much sums up everything that we spoke about and that we're going to continue to talk about in episodes nine and in episode 10. So I hope you guys, you know, tune in for that. But as usual, if you guys have any thoughts, comments, or anything that you would like to share, we'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below. And with that, thank you for tuning in. And until our next episode, always remember, having faith in God, having faith in yourself, and having faith in others will create the evolution that you are seeking. Say.